Hello, everybody. Welcome back to X Plane 10. Once again, my name is Jeff Aviano. Today, we're going to look at the Airfoil Labs Cessna 172 SP. We have done a video on this airplane before, but now we are on a newer version of it, uh, version 1.61 to be exact. And a lot of things have changed. Uh, you have this quick start, you know, where you can just start it up and get going. Uh, here's your camera options. Some things haven't changed as far as this goes. It's the same stuff. However, you can turn off the smart camera. We're going to leave it on today. It's on compatibility mode. We could turn GFX advanced on if we wanted to. We're not going to do that today. Not worried about that. Uh, you can change the cameras from there. Weight and fuel balance here. We're going to leave it at 74% uh, across the board, 20 gallons on each side. Uh, and pilot, I'm going to leave it about 187. I set it at last time because uh, that is how much I weigh. That works. Okay, cool. So we're obviously in the confines to go flying today. We can go to the settings. And remember one thing uh, with this airplane before, remember we didn't have a pilot now, bum -ba -da -ba, you can have a pilot in there and you can actually see him. That is, I, that's awesome. I mean, that's really cool. You can also decide to show them when inside. We're not gonna do that because uh, seeing their arms and their legs and stuff is kind of weird. I'm not very used to it. Uh, they did add a lot of neat things um, as far as needle vibrations. Uh, you can adjust this to your preference. I'm gonna keep these on the default levels just if you were to buy this airplane straight out right this is exactly what you would see uh you can start with the pilot inside if you want to you can turn it off these are all the different logical settings that you can do uh transponder values are going to be at 1200 by default for me because we're flying vfr today it works out great controllers i'm gonna leave this on default i'm using the yoko yoke so um you can do side tech yoke recommended setting which is really neat that they have this thing all preset because a lot of the problems we had before with this airplane was getting those settings just right and they finally gave us a bunch of functionality here. So I'm gonna leave everything at default. So my feedback to you will be the same thing as if you were to buy it yourself. Maintenance, we can open it up. Uh, yep, the airplane is pretty much brand new. We have uh, some things kind of turning medium there as you can see, but uh, for the most part, I've only taken this thing out for one flight uh, in the recent times. So that's why everything's in the green looking fantastic. Checklist. They did up the checklist. The checklists look a lot better, a lot more clean. Uh, we have contents here. We can go through. You go to the pre-flight menu, and then you have this gold thing. You know, just like the old same thing you would have if you were to climb up in the real airplane, uh, and you had that right there um, in your lap to go through. So we have pre-flight, all that good stuff. We'll just get right to the part of pre before starting engine. We'll have that ready to go for us once we get in to the airplane, but. Here it is from the outside. You see, there's the ailerons moving. Fantastic stuff. We're gonna head up into the airplane and uh, get situated. All right, you can hear the outside uh, sounds right now, but if we close the door, it will go bye-bye. Just like that, fantastic. All right, so we're in the 172 SP. It's a beautiful, beautiful airplane. Uh, pretty excited to go flying in it. Let's go ahead and turn our master battery on. We hear those gyros coming to life there. Mm, all right, that works for me. We have a beacon light on. Yep, that's all good. I'm just going to start this how I normally would a real airplane. Um, I'm not using my SciTech throttle quadrant, so I'm using an X55 just for throttle, which is nice because it's nice and heavy. However, I don't have control manually outside of the sim um, for the mixture control. So I'm not really worried about that. We're going to crack the throttle quarter. There we go. We're going to turn this fuel pump on right here. Push this in. Watch our fuel flow spike right there. Beautiful. Bring it back out. Fuel pump off. And we can go ahead and start this baby up. Go to the start. The engine needs a little more prime. Needs more prime? Really? Okay. As you can see, they added this stuff in here now. Um, I the usually just wait. Seems ideally primed. Uh, you don't say ideally primed. That's fine. <laughs> I mean. I would have called that whatever, but okay. Let's go to the start. It catches. You push it forward, and it comes to life. Look at that. Beautiful. Hold our brakes down here. And we'll bring our power back to about 1,000 RPM here. Let it get all situated. Fantastic. We'll turn the avionics master switch on. I had all these on from last time. Really cool. It remembers everything that you had the airplane, you know, pretty much the panel state is how you had it last. And I do like that a lot. I do. I do. We're going to get the weather and all that good stuff. And then uh, we'll wait for this all to turn on and we should be good to go. Now we should be 
set here on the GPS for Kilo Sierra Echo Tango. We should, we should. And we are, there we go, beautiful. Because we are at Kilo Sierra Echo Tango in St. Charles County Smart, which is right here outside of St. Louis. We're just to the north of St. Louis. Um, and what we got here? All oh, that's all preset. Yep, that looks good. Flaps are up. We can use our checklist here. Let's do the after start because we're not using checklists too crazy today. We are in a Cessna, so it's not a big deal. Uh, it's all about flows. But if you were in the real airplane, yes, I would use always, always use checklists. After starts, flaps, they're checked and retracted. Avionics master switch is on. Radios are on. ATIS, we're gonna we'll get all that information here in a minute. Altimeter and all that. Heading indicator, transponder, nav lights. Well, we don't worry about that. Ooh, that's delayed. Usually that beep right there comes on like right after you start the engine or right after you start the uh, avionics. So I don't know what that's all about. Let's uh, get our weather and uh, we'll be good to go here. I'm going to go ahead and pull the parking brake and grab weather. The spark plugs may start fouling. The spark plugs may start fouling. You see, this is like uh, something, you know, in all of the time. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. Maybe it'll help. But I've never ever leaned an engine in the real world on the ground. I don't know why they started this whole thing. Maybe, maybe we were taught wrong, but I've never done that before. I wouldn't imagine why we would need to do it today, but whatever. We'll get the weather. Okay, here is the weather right here. FS Global real weather. We're, we're on version uh, 1.7 right now. Winds are calm. No precipitation here. All that good stuff. This is all pretty much broken down for you. Uh, and then you can look at the METAR if you want to. But as of that right here, Winds are calm, broken, 7,000. Awesome. So altimeter is going to be 2998. Let's go ahead and set that real fast. 2998, which is really close anyway. About right. Well, I'd say about right there was good. Yep. I'm happy with that. All right. So let's go ahead and release the brakes. Let this thing roll forward. Check the brakes one more time. We're good. That's part of the taxi flow anyway and we'll taxi out of here we're gonna make a left and we'll taxi down to runway 36 since the winds are nice and calm we'll watch out for that dc3 on our left there it is and we'll taxi around him and take the next taxiway over to runway 36. all right it's got a very nice feel on the ground i remember last time uh, I did fly this airplane. I had issues with just the way that it felt on the ground and it seems to be a little bit better. It's not as twitchy. Oh, we're getting a little bit of a stutter there. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, a little bit of break. Very nice feel to it. Still has that X-plane just like when you start to add a little bit more break than needed, it wants to come to a complete stop. However, taxiing with just rudder is really nice. That is pretty nice indeed. So we'll taxi to the end of this taxiway and we're going to do our run up down there so we don't have to worry about um, spinning into the wind because the winds are calm. So it works out for us. Very nice sounds they have added here. I really, really like the sound of that. Reminds me of being in the real airplane, actually. All right, we're going to come to a stop right here. I'm going to just ease into the brakes. Ooh, man, they did work on those a lot. Uh, although it does that X plane just ends the stop right there. You just saw it. All right, so we're at 1,000. We're going to go ahead and pull the parking brake. And we'll rally this baby up to 1,800 RPM. With the needle movement. That is so cool. We got about 1,800 right there. Fantastic. And we're going to check the magnetos first. So we'll do the right one first. There's a 50 drop. Back to both. Do the left one. There's a 50 drop. Back to both. We'll check all of our stuff here. We've got fuel quantity. We've got oil pressure. We've got temp looking decent there. I'm going to push this in. I don't really like that. EGT looks like it's spiking from that. Uh, VAC is in the green. Amps are good. Fuel flow is in the green. Everything looks really good. We'll double check our uh, trim here and bring it forward just a tad. Fantastic. Let's bring it back to a thousand. Release our brakes and let's do a landing light and a strobe light. 
then it'll work we'll turn our yoke back on and move our head back to the position it needs to be at I'm gonna lean back a little further because with a Yoko I have uh, a you know yoke a lot further back than the Cytex so that's what's happening there great job on the scenery there Jeff I made the scenery here so that's why I can tell myself I'm an idiot for putting that there although that could have been default and I just never removed it I don't remember line up on runway three six very nice and we're going to add the power pretty much firewall it and get on out of here and the airplanes no should lunge to the left let's see if it does as I add that power there it goes to the left a little bit I'll have counter it with the right rudder full power there we go that set Ooh, I like that sound right there it changed completely wow the ground physics are really good there's the speed coming up 55 knots rotate Oh man, they've done a number on that. That's a lot better than last time. That nose up on the horizon here, looking good. Hand still on the throttle, just in case something goes wrong. We'll pitch for 80 knots for our best climb out of here. So I'll use a little bit, roll that uh, trim there forward a little bit more there. We'll get right up to 80. We'll climb up to 1100 feet. We'll start our turn to the west. And then we'll probably climb up to about 2,500 feet or so and do some maneuvers. One thing I do want to try out is doing steep turns with trim. Um, I was watching, I always watch uh, a lot of different, you know, f various YouTubers out there. You know, Captain Moonbeam. I watch uh, uh, Stevo One Canevo. His his channel is absolutely amazing. Um, I watch M Zero A. You know, all sorts of stuff. Mr. Aviation 101. I like all, you know. A pilot, of my, a friend of mine. I have no idea what I'm saying here as I'm starting my turn here. We did not do 1100 as I wanted to, but we'll go up to 1500. That's fine. And we'll roll out here to the west. But yeah, I watch a lot of different YouTubers. And M0A was showing steep turns using your trim. So we're going to try that today. I think it's like bumping. I want to say it's like bumping it. So three times or four times before you go into the steep turn. I can't remember to the right and then one to the left of things like three because of the P factor. Mm, don't remember, but we'll try it anyway. Back to 80 knots here. bringing that nose up on that horizon. Fantastic little hazy day here in the St. Louis area. But everything looks good to me. We got the green, green, green. Vax a little high there, but that's okay. It's still in the green technically. Pressure's good. Temps are good. Fuel flow is out of this world because, well, it should be. We have full power right now. We're not at cruise yet. I mean, if we wanted to, we could reduce down to 2200 RPM. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's do 2200 RPM right there. Fantastic. We're not going to worry about leaning this. Uh, you know, we're just doing maneuvers today. We're not doing anything too crazy flying over the Mississippi River to the west. So we're on the north side of St. Louis. Lambert would be off to our south there at a heading of well, actually it's southeast of us, behind us and to the left. Alright. Getting some stutters here and there, but X-Plane's going to X-Plane. I'm using Skymax Pro version 3. Point, uh, I think we're on 2 or something like that now. Uh, maybe not. 3.1A or something with a real world connector. Real weather connector. I think that's what it's called. Real world. Yeah, not even close. All right, fantastic. We're at 90 knots. Our maneuvering speed coming up on, we'll do 3,000 feet. I said 2,500, but I was talking. So that's okay. The beauty of being in a simulator. We don't have to worry about those things. But we're beyond 90 knots, and that's plenty for our maneuver speed here. So coming up on 3,000, going to level it off. Looking good. Let's do a couple clearing turns to the right here. You would do this just to check for traffic. We're not really worried about it. Have, you know, a healthy 30 degree turn. I don't know what these stutters are coming from. I really don't get it. That could be SkyMax Pro or something. I mean, it could be the airplane, but we are getting, we are experiencing these stutters and I don't know what that's all about. Let's start one to the left here, but that's not good at all. Look at that. That's horrible. We weren't getting that when we were on the ground. We're just getting it now. 
So I don't know what that's all about. Hmm. I think it's SkyMax Pro, personally. Maybe I'll change some settings to see if we can fix that. Okay, I made some adjustments to SkyMax Pro, and we don't have stuttering anymore, so that's good news. However, we did bust over 3,500 because I was in that, or at 3,500 now, which is fine. But we'll do some, we'll get set up for some stalls and whatnot. But let's do a steep turn. So what I want to do is put in some uh, trim, and we'll do ours to the right first. So I'm going to add that trim in. That's probably good there. And start a steep turn to the right. Add that power in. Use that trim where it needs to. And we sh I'll be damned. It really does pretty much what it was supposed to. There's 45 degree right there. Look at that. I'm not, I'm not even touching the controls. I know you can't see that, but I really am not. So it's just like Jason said. That is phenomenal. I'm going to use that in the real world next time I do it. Uh, that's really, really nice. You just trim the airplane in it. Look at that. Turns on a dime. We can roll right off here to the west. And look at that. We didn't lose any. We didn't gain or lose any uh, altitude except for the end right there. But it is a simulation. It's difficult to do. So let's do one to the left. So I'm going to go less than what we did last time. Let's get back down to 3,500 feet. Come on down. Come on down. Back down to 3,500. Airplane, please. Wait, it doesn't want to come down today, does it? No, it doesn't. There we go. Getting close back to 3,500 feet. All right, cool. So we'll level off. And I'm going to go up a little bit this time and turn to the left. Because that, that P factor should really help us here. And I'm, not, I'm just going to add that power in and watch what it does here. I am not touching the controls. Just have my hand barely on there right now. Letting the airplane do its thing. Look at that. Right at 3,500. Feels like it really wants to tip over the left more, though. So I'm going to add a little bit of right turn. There we go. And you can see it right there on the uh, yoke, what I'm doing there. So, yeah, steep turn, guys. That really helps with your steep turns. Adding that little bit of your um, trim. Trimming with it. It's really cool stuff. All right, we'll level off right here on the west. As you can see the roads right there, I'm going to push forward as well so I don't gain too much altitude this time. Fantastic stuff. Let's pull the power back here. Completely at 1,500 RPM. We're at 3,500 feet. I am going to let the airplane do its thing of slowing down. We're going to get in the white arc, and we're going to add flaps in so we can do a power off stall. There we go. We're in the green, so we're going to go 10 degree flap there. 20. 30. Let's just dump them all in. There we go. It wants to pitch up on us. There's 60. We're going to bring that nose forward. There we go. Let this thing come down to about 60 or so. Once we get 60, we're going to pull the power completely. And we will flare like we want to stall. All right. Come on. Come on down. I think doesn't want to increase airspeed with these flaps out, I tell you. There we go. Pull the power 100% back. And here we go. Reach for the stars. Let it slowly go into a stall here. There's the buffet of the wing. And we are stalling. Look at that. <laughs> that is so good. That puts a big smile on my face seeing an airplane stall like that. That's that's realistic, man. That was good. That was really good. Right, let's bring these flaps up ever so slightly here. Next, we'll do a power onslaught. We're going to make a turn back to the east. So we're not worried about that. Yep. So flaps are up. Back to 2200 RPM. We're going to start a turn to the right here. Let's climb back up to 3000 feet. Wow. That was incredible. Absolutely incredible. And there's the Mississippi River there as we turn back to the east. Back up on 3,000 feet here. And east is going to be right here on the money. All right. Back up to 3,000 feet. And we're going to do a power on stall. These are where you can almost spin the airplane. We're not going to... The attempt here is to not spin the airplane. But we're going to uh, see what it's all about. So we're going to... 
do it pretty much like you would a power off stall and we're not going to add any flaps in we're just going to add power to 2200 rpm some flight schools do full power but we're just going to do 2200 rpm today so let it come on back used my trim to my advantage here so i'm trimming back trimming back trimming back to help us there we go all right fantastic when we hit that 42 knots we're going to add that power in and we're going to have to stomp on that ball let's see if it does here's the stall horn add that power yep i'm on that right rudder there's 22 rpm right there and this is going to pretty much show you that you can stall by not just airspeed but also angle of attack so here we are it's getting worse pull that nose back sometimes these babies don't want to stall get on the right rudder there there we go a lot of right rudder here and it's there's the wing stall right there on the right it buffeted that was perfect that's what you want you don't want to stall the airplane when you get in that mode right there it's so easy to stall the airplane and we don't want to do that so that was good stuff, man. <laughs> you can really uh, use the Airfoil Labs 172. Uh, I mean, with this Yoko yoke is absolutely incredible. It just reminds me of the feel of a real airplane. Um, but with that said, like, you know, if you're off doing training, this is a great, great airplane to train in and then go mimic this in the real world, you know? So let's look at our GPS. Say, I don't know where we're at. We can look right here distance the track will be 086 so pretty much over to the left here and it's showing us currently right now we're only six miles from the airport so it's just right up there 086 to the right here and yeah it's over that way so pretty much off our nose i, I doubt we can see it in this haze well, maybe we can see it Is that it right there no, it's it's a little too hazy to see it right off our nose, but it is over there. So we're going to fly over that way. Okay, we are almost at the airport, and I know we are high up in the air because I want to simulate what it's like to slip in this airplane. I haven't slipped in it yet, um, and it's always fun to do slips. So we're almost to 3,000 feet. So we're going to slip the airplane by going full right rudder and using our left wing, you know, to uh, keep us nice and straight here. But you're going to notice when we do this, we'll go right rudder full there. Oh, listen to the wind noise there and just watch what the airplane does and keep it in a nice straight line. You'll notice we lose a lot of altitude, but we don't gain a lot of airspeed. That is the beauty of the slip. So what I plan on doing here is we're going to slip a little bit. We're going to turn right. We're going to do an extended left down one for one three six that way i will have plenty of time to get back down to the ground here so there's a nice slip to the right so let's do a slip to the left that is so good all right let's turn while slipping now Susna tells you to never slip with your flaps down but if i was in an emergency situation and i was like man i gotta i gotta make this field you bet your ass I'll be using some flaps while slipping. We actually did that in our check ride once with an FAA instructor. He was like, you never done that? Never slipped in a Cessna with flaps? I was like, nope. Like, well, this is what it feels like. And he showed me. It's like, well, it's good to know. Because I would normally wouldn't ever do that. And we were always told to never do that. So it worked out. There's 1,500 feet right there. We're going to go down to 1,400 for our pattern altitude today. There's 1,400 right there. We're going to release the slip fantastic and look at that we didn't gain any uh speed or anything like that we're gonna go up to 1500 rpm because we're gonna be right on the money here in a few moments i know i'm still descending i want to be but using that 1400 as a reference for our downwind here because we're almost to the threshold and we're gonna go to 1500 rpm which we're already at we're gonna go 10 degree of flap here so let's go 10 a flap add that power in here so we want to pitch for our airspeed and we're going to use that power for our altitude so it's looking good here let's pitch for that airspeed we need to put that nose down there we go that'll work perfect i'm going to go for that 80 knots here for our base so let's do it now turn let that nose come down for that 80 knots man 20 degree flat 
Well, actually, that was 20, wasn't it, in this airplane? This airplane only has 5, 10, 20, and 30. Ours had more than that, but that's okay. Now we can do it. That's a good base there. Get those flaps in. There's the runway on our left. Fantastic. Watch our speed here. Pitch for that speed and watch our altitude as well. Having to use a lot of forward pressure there. Let's get that airspeed back. I don't know why it's doing that. That's strange. A little bit more left here. We're going to be a little high here, but that's okay. We, we were messing with the flaps, so that really screwed us on not only airspeed, but our altitude as well. So I'll pull that power back for altitude. They're still pitching for that 70 knots. There we go. Beautiful. Let's go. Final setting the flap. It is set. And we're going to get right here on the glide slope. Looking good here. Pitching down. Adding that power back in for that altitude. Looking good here. Fantastic. You know, 65 is perfect. Coming over the piano keys. We're going to pull the power back completely and let this thing bleed off airspeed. As we get into the round out to flare. We're going to hold that nose up. We are down. Now let the nose come down as well. That was kind of flat landing. I needed a lot less airspeed there over the numbers and more flare. But you get the picture. It wasn't our best, but it wasn't our worst either. Let's make this left turn here. Wonderful. Add that power back in so we don't kill our engine. And we bring our flaps up and all that good stuff. Let's watch the landing. The spark plugs may start fouling. Well, that's great. All right. Let's bring our flaps up all the way. As we taxi in here, we can go ahead and kill our landing light and the strobe. And I say that was a successful flight to me. I had a lot of fun on it. We'll have to do some more flying in this airplane in the future. Uh, doing some VOR navigation, all that good stuff. But nonetheless... I am very, very pleased with the new update of the Airfoil Labs Cessna 172. It's fantastic. But further here. Turn to the right. And we're going to watch out for that. There he is over there, that DC-3. We don't want to hit that thing, of course. And a little bit of power here. Don't want to kill the... Don't want to foul our spark plugs. <laughs> Hard left here. It's got a much more realistic uh, handling ground handling than it did before that's for sure i mean because sustenance you can turn them pretty sharp like that there's our brakes there keep it at a thousand rpm i don't want to kill this thing or foul the start the well, spark plugs right off the bat here pull it back a little bit further all right pull it out. there we go fantastic all right and uh we'll go avionics off oh actually you know what forgot to kill the engine first kill the engine like that the engine seems ideally primed well that's good to know so if you come off then this can go all the way off then we turn the master off open the door and welcome back to earth how about that well guys that's gonna do it for this short video today well it's not really short i think it was about 30 minutes or so uh displaying what uh, the airfoil lab cessna 172 has become it's a fantastic product i absolutely love it um i can't say anything bad against it i mean it's it, the only thing i noticed is this egt thing but that temp that we saw earlier was a little high in the real cessna it's usually a lot lower but i think that they know about that so that's something that they they're working on because the temp wouldn't be that high under normal conditions but uh what do i know <laughs> i've only only got near 100 hours in these things but uh with that said beacon is left on there because of the master battery we always kept it on for the next person. Uh, we'll keep it on both. You can always go to the left or the right, whatever you want to. Uh, we're going to leave it on both. That is fine. And not really much else to do. Um, I don't believe we have any chalks or anything like that. Uh, I didn't see it in any of the options here. Settings. No, nope, All that good stuff. Okay. Yeah. Nothing there. But yeah, that's going to do it, guys. 
I will see you all very soon. We're going to be doing some more X-Plane, don't you worry. I just wanted to get back into this airplane. It's been a while. Uh, we'll get back into flying the heavy soon enough. With that said, I'll see you all next time. Take care.